Yo, it's Dr. Cool. You know, all forward movement isn't progress. In this regard, a little dive into the past can perhaps help us grasp the immense potential that universe we lived in have in store for us. Have you heard of the name Henry Moray before? Well, this genius poster groundbreaking technologies that totally destroyed everything we know about thermodynamics and physics. This prior to a similar event playing out in 2025, African-born inventor Maxwell Chikumbutso, a high school dropout, a self-thought engineer who cooked 300 years physics, Henry Moray was born into a world on the cusp of change. The year was 1889. Electricity was still a novelty, a mysterious force with unimaginable potential. Raised in a devout Mormon household in Salt Lake City, Utah, I found myself drawn to both the wonders of science and the mysteries of faith. He devoured books on electricity and radio waves, his mind buzzing with questions. One day, he stumbled upon a book that would change his life. It was the works of Nikola Tesla, the visionary inventor who dreamed of harnessing the very energy of the universe. Tesla became my hero, my inspiration, a beacon guiding me towards a future illuminated by boundless energy. He immersed himself in Tesla's theories, his mind racing with possibilities. Moray, fueled by Tesla's vision, began to imagine a world free from the constraints of traditional energy sources, a world where energy wasn't dug from the earth or harnessed from rivers, but drawn freely from the cosmos. This belief, this daring dream, would set me on a collision course with the scientific establishment, it was a path fraught with obstacles, disbelief, and ultimately, tragedy. By the 1920s, Moray claimed to have achieved the impossible. He had built a device, a machine of intricate wiring and mysterious components that seemed to defy the known laws of physics. This was no mere battery or generator. This was something entirely new. I called it my radiant energy device. It was a machine that I asserted could tap into the very fabric of space, drawing energy from the cosmos itself. The demonstrations of the device were nothing short of astonishing. Witnesses told of Moray's machine lighting up entire banks of light bulbs, powering a radio for hours, even running a 100,000 watt radiant energy tube. There was no visible source of power, no connection to any conventional energy source. The scientific community, steeped in the established laws of thermodynamics, reacted with skepticism, even outright hostility. Moray's claims were deemed outlandish, impossible. His device, they argued, violated the fundamental principles of energy conservation. Accusations of fraud and trickery were rampant. Yet I remained steadfast. I insisted that my device was not a hoax, that I had tapped into a source of energy unknown to mainstream science. I challenged the scientific community to open their minds to new possibilities, to look beyond the confines of conventional thinking. The skepticism towards Moray's work soon turned into something more sinister. Jealous competitors, threatened by the potential of his invention, sought to discredit and destroy his work. His lab was broken into, vital components smashed, and research notes stolen. Threats were made against his life, forcing him to carry a gun for protection. Then came the night that would forever shroud my work in mystery. On a cold night in March 1939, my lab was attacked. A group of unidentified assailants, their faces hidden in the shadows, stormed into my workshop. They smashed my equipment, destroyed years of meticulous research, and vanished into the night with crucial components of my radiant energy device. The attack left Moray devastated, his life's work in ruins. Who were these shadowy figures and what was their motive? Was it industrial sabotage, an attempt to silence a threat to powerful energy interests? Or were there darker forces at play, threatened by the implications of Moray's discoveries? The truth, like the identity of the attackers, remains elusive to this day. The attack on his lab marked a turning point in Moray's life. Disillusioned and fearing for his safety, he retreated from the public eye. He continued his research, but with increased secrecy, guarding his secrets closely. 
He focused on developing less controversial inventions, securing patents for a cold cathode tube and exploring applications of radioactive materials. Despite the setbacks and the skepticism, Moray never abandoned his belief in radiant energy. He continued to refine his theories, amassing a wealth of knowledge that he documented meticulously in notebooks and technical drawings. But he never again rebuilt his radiant energy device. The attack had taken its toll, leaving him wary and distrustful. Moray spent his later years in relative obscurity, a far cry from the days when his invention promised to revolutionize the world. He died in 1974, his dream of free energy seemingly fading with him. Or did it? Despite his disappearance from the public eye, my father's work continues to fascinate and inspire. His writings filled with tantalizing clues and cryptic diagrams have become a source of endless speculation and debate. Researchers and enthusiasts, driven by the allure of the unknown, pour over his notes, seeking to unlock the secrets of his radiant energy device. Some believe that my father's device was a hoax, a clever illusion designed to deceive. Others, however, see him as a visionary genius, a man ahead of his time. They point to the numerous eyewitness accounts, the sheer output of his device, and the lack of any proven explanation for how it could have worked using conventional science. Was my father a charlatan, a skilled showman who duped the world with smoke and mirrors? Or was he a true pioneer, a man who stumbled upon a source of energy so profound, so disruptive, that it threatened the very foundations of our understanding of the universe? The mystery of Moray's radiant energy device goes beyond the technical details of its construction. It delves into the very nature of energy itself and the limits of our scientific understanding. What if energy, like music, is not merely a resource to be consumed, but a symphony waiting to be heard? What if the universe is not a silent, empty void, but a chorus of vibrations, a boundless ocean of energy waiting to be tapped? Moray's work, regardless of whether it was real or imagined, serves as a powerful reminder that the universe is full of mysteries, of possibilities that lie beyond the realm of what we currently believe to be possible. It challenges us to question our assumptions, to push the boundaries of our knowledge, and to remain open to the possibility that the answers we seek may lie in the most unexpected of places. Today, as we face the growing challenges of climate change and resource depletion, the search for clean, sustainable energy sources has become more urgent than ever. Moray's dream of harnessing the energy of the cosmos, once dismissed as the ramblings of a madman, now seems eerily prescient. Scientists are exploring new frontiers in energy generation, from fusion power to zero-point energy, seeking to unlock the secrets of the universe's boundless energy potential. Could Moray's work, shrouded in mystery and controversy, hold the key to a future powered by the stars themselves? The possibility, however remote, is tantalizing. Imagine a world where energy is abundant and freely available to all, where the very air we breathe crackles with unseen potential. It's a future that Moray envisioned a century ago, a future that may yet be within our grasp. The story of Thomas Henry Moray is a cautionary tale of a lost genius, a reminder that the path to scientific progress is rarely smooth or straightforward. It's a story of innovation met with skepticism, of brilliance overshadowed by controversy, and of a dream that refused to die. Whether Moray's radiant energy device was a genuine breakthrough or an elaborate hoax, his legacy serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of curiosity, of the need to question the status quo and to remain open to the possibility that the universe still holds many secrets waiting to be uncovered. Moray's challenge to the scientific community remains as relevant today as it was a century ago to look beyond the confines of our current understanding, to embrace the unknown, and to never stop questioning, exploring, and dreaming of a brighter future, powered by the boundless energy of the cosmos itself.
If you are caught in the web of Maxwell Chikumbut, so self-powered invention, now you know better, that Moray challenged scientific community back then, are you thinking what I am thinking? History is replaying itself to unravel the mysteries of energy that is not bound by the limits of fossil fuel or shackles of grid power, but pure renewable energy from the very air that we breathe but to bound by endless possibilities that lies in the deepest part of our imaginative thinking. This energy is neither racial, geographical or political. The divine is in constant communication with us, and all we have to do is listen to its symphony that talks to us in our deepest curiosity and summation of our entire consciousness. This is the ream, groundbreaking technologies and invention that reshaped our world was born, so they you have it, folks. As life goes on, we should be open-minded to welcome the strangest and unimaginable invention that defies even the cosmic laws created by human to become possible. Thanks for watching. Stay positive, optimistic, curious, hopeful, and more importantly, stay alive. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a flight to catch and a self-powered car to drive. See you in the comments section.